morning, everybody. All of this, big business. But the question is at the moment, is it going to continue to get bigger? Because that will come down to whether we want to put our feet up like Carol or get stuck in ourselves, a bit like me. Now, after a tough few years due to the financial crash, the UK do-it-yourself market has actually grown. It's worth £14 billion a year now. So, as I was saying, big business, but lots of retailers doing battle for all that money we're spending. So you've got your traditional DIY stores, but also the likes of Wilco and Screwfix getting in on the market in quite a big way these days. But it's home base that's run into real trouble. We've heard that over the last few days. Closing more than 40 stores, 1,500 jobs at risk as well. So the question is, I guess, is that a problem with home base or are we just not putting up shelves ourselves anymore? It depends how big the job is. If it looks easy, we'll have a go, normally make a mess of it and then get my dad in. So my dad's very handy, but I do think the younger generation not quite so as handy as my dad's generation, really. I don't really do any DIY, but my mum and dad built a house themselves from scratch. I don't do my own DIY. Why? I have a husband who does it. I always done our painting, didn't yeah, I? Yeah. Decorating. You should do everything, knock yeah. walls down the lot. Yeah. But I as you get older... today get people in to do everything. Yeah. But the elder ones do it themselves. <laughs> Three hours to put a barbecue together. It said 45 minutes on the uh, on the uh, on the thing. On the instruction. It was only because my 14 year old Kim helped me out that I actually got it done in three hours. So, so no <laughs> DIY. No so, DIY. Nobody got it. <laughs> Admire that perseverance, but there's a few problems there for retailers to battle with at the minute. Firstly, the weather. If it isn't nice, we don't buy tools. But then, if it's too hot, do we bother using them in the first place? Online competition, of course. That's all retailers having to battle with that at the minute. So if we do actually decide to part with our cash, where is it actually going? The retailers in the UK at the moment are falling into two camps. So the big box DIY retailers that we recognise, the B&Qs, the home bases, the Wicks of this world, they've had a tough few years and most of them have been closing stores over, since 2012 really and they are finding it tough. There are retailers in the UK and those that are dealing with the tradesmen, the builders, the small builders, the kitchen fitters who are actually doing very well, the likes of Toolstation, Screwfix, Selco, Howdens, those businesses are all growing at the moment and it reflects the fact that we are, or we'd rather go to tradespeople to do those tasks for us. Interesting, so to put those winners and losers in perspective, Kingfisher actually own both B&Q and Screwfix. Last time round, sales were down at traditional B&Q, while Screwfix sales were actually up by a similar proportion. Of course, sales overall still much smaller at Screwfix than at B&Q. Are we still interested in doing it? Uh, the Kingfisher boss says the fact that young people are looking at DIY videos for inspiration on YouTube, one of the, one of the most viewed stuff on, on YouTube is actually DIY videos, photos of home decor on Pinterest as well, of course, means there's a future for all of these home improvement retailers, so say that boss. We've got the TV builder Craig Phillips with us in an hour's time. So we're going to chew over what it is we're doing and what we're getting tradespeople in to do uh, with him a little bit later. Send us some of your best and worst achievements around the house, though. Be honest, like Carol, if you've tried a <laughs> shelf and it's a bit crooked. Can we really do it? It's tricky. It's tricky to get it just right. It is. Perseverance. It took me three weekends to get that toilet system by. <laughs> You've got to get spirit level of it. We've got TV builder Craig Phillips with us. We've been talking all morning around about DIY, haven't we? And we've had those latest results in sales at B&Q and Screwfix. Now, in the last three months, both of those have seen a big boost from the weather. Yet, Homebase have said this week it's closing stores and cutting jobs. So what's going on in the market at the minute? Well, we've got Craig with us as well. We're going to chat with Craig about the biggest changes he's seen in a moment. We've also got joining us uh, from our London newsroom, uh, the DIY retail analyst, Thomas Slide. Uh, Thomas, we'll just kick off with you. Good morning. What, what do you think we can learn from what we've seen from Kingfisher, which owns B&Q and Screwfix this morning? Sales up at both. Yeah, so the sales up um, at both B&Q and, and Screwfix this morning, I think what you can read from that is just how good the weather's been over the last few months. Um, really, these are their first half figures, um, and it's a tale of, it really is a tale of two quarters. The first quarter of, of, of the year was hit by terrible weather. We had the, the beast from the east, the snow, we had a bit of a washout Easter, um, and sales were really poor in that first quarter. 
And during the second quarter, it's been totally different. We've had some incredible weather. It's been really hot. Um, we've had lots of events to get the sort of feel-good factor up. People getting out into their gardens with barbecues and, and, and what have you, going out to, to buy plants. Um, and that's boosted sales in that second quarter. Um, the What's big gone question... What's wrong with Homebase then? What, why haven't Homebase been able to capitalise on that? <clears throat> Homebase certainly has its own problems. So the, the, the CVA, which, which came out yesterday, which says they're going to close uh, 42 stores, um, is sort of a long time coming. Um, Homebase was a, was a good profitable business um, up until 2016 when the Australian firm West Farmers came in and bought it and tried to change it into the Bunnings um, fascia. It managed to change a few of the stores into Bunnings stores but, but basically it sort of part shifted it to a much more kind of hard end DIY sort of warehouse store. Um, left the rest of it the same the customers have, have left and gone elsewhere and now it's sort of left in a bit of a bit of a limbo position and the problem home base has got is it's got a few of the stores in its estate which just aren't profitable and when you're trying to turn a business around like that you need you need a bit of breathing space a bit of time you can't have unprofitable stores um holding you back that's from that and challenge. that's i think why yeah i think that the one yeah. quarter of good weather that we've we've seen and um, to boost sales just isn't enough to change the sort of longer term issues that are facing um home base but also the, the, the whole sort of DIY industry, really. Thomas, thank you. Thomas Slide there, who's a retail analyst, DIY. Craig, we, that's sort of what's going on, the big businesses, the retail, <clears throat> retailers on our streets. What, what do you see as being the biggest changes in that customers are yours? Yeah. Would, want, would want doing? I think generally, yeah, customers are wanting work doing around the house all the time, you know. I think the tradesmen themselves, or DIYers, uh, the, the skills are lacking in them. You know, they haven't been passed down through older generations, you know, so when young people are eventually getting on the property ladder, they haven't got the skills to do it themselves and they're having to turn to tradesmen to do that work. When you look, when you must go around some of these stores yourselves. Yes. Do you think there's anything that they could all be doing a bit better to encourage people to get involved with doing doing stuff themselves? Uh, yeah, they have leaflets and books and things like that to try and encourage things, but I think that's a little bit past the time, really. I think, you know, YouTube, you know, anyone who turns to some DIY skills now, they want to learn something, you know, they turn to YouTube and they see a step-by-step -step video, and that's going to encourage them to do it themselves and give them the skills they need, hopefully. Are there certain things you think you just... You, where you look at it and go, everybody should just be doing that themselves. Well, I, well there's a simple video, just follow it, it's safe. Uh, yes, th there's plenty out there, you know, I've done hundreds myself out there, you know, we've got millions yeah, of views, you're you know. More skilled, yeah. <laughs> That's right. But if you do it a step-by-step -step stage, you know, and people start off gently doing small items and then work up to bigger items. But I generally believe if you're a homeowner, it's probably the biggest investment most people make in their life. It's their responsibility to maintain your house, make it look good and, you know, keep the cost down if you maintain it regularly. Are uh, tradespeople still a bit too expensive for a lot of people when they think they want a small job done? Uh, yes, and what we find sometimes as well is the tradesmen get busy doing bigger jobs and they don't want to do the small jobs. Mm. So we talk to some customers who only want mine and maintenance doing and they can't get a tradesman yeah, to do it. Yeah, when it's a 60 quid call out or something like that. That's right, yeah, and they don't want to pay that for a, a tiny little unblocking of a, a sink, you know, sort of thing. So w what can bridge that gap? How can you make that... I think bridge that gap is people being a bit more daring and having a go at doing their own maintenance, their own DIY, you know, as long as it's safely. Doing the correct research, I would always advise people, go on YouTube, look at my videos and show them how to do it. And then it, once they've done one or two jobs, they'll build up their confidence and I'll find they'll want to do more and more. Great. I've got a question for you. Nothing yes. to do with DIY, <laughs> but it's sort of one of the reasons we know who yeah. you are. Big brother, yes. you won it. First one I remember, reality show yeah, back in 18 2000. years ago. <laughs> Love Island has really yes. taken, mm. you know, everybody, well, most people, by <laughs> yes. storm. What do you make of it all, the, the latest hoo-ha? Um, I've got to be honest, I've not watched a single programme of it, but I'm hearing everybody talk about it, and it's a little bit like, when I was in Big Brother and I first came out, my sister and family all said to me, you couldn't go nowhere without somebody talking about Big Brother. And I find it's a little bit like that now with Love Island, mm. but I fail to see any of it. Do you yeah. think any, any DIY potential from Love Island? Uh, well, is there a market? <laughs> there might be. Yeah. DIY Got in a, a different genre, but I don't know. <laughs> Craig, thank you very much. My Craig Phillips there, TV builder. Knows a lot about DIY. That's the main reason we've got yeah. it. Are you considering applying for Love Island for the next series, Sean? It sounds uh, like it. Not okay. yet. I don't know if they'll let me on with me tool belt, will they? <laughs>